Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for coming out on this beautiful, sunny afternoon. I'm Kara Carmack, the Assistant Director of Exhibitions and Public Programs at the New York Studio School. And I'm honored to welcome you to the last event of our Spring 2024 Evening Lecture Series. We're beyond thrilled to close our season with artist Jonathan Linden Chase. As a reminder, you can head to the New York Studio School's YouTube channel to catch any lectures that you might have missed this season, revisit your favorites, or discover new conversations in our archived videos. A reminder to those in person on 8th Street to please silence all cell phones during tonight's event. We'll reserve time at the end for a Q&A with the audience. For those in the room, please raise your hand and I'll bring a microphone to you so our online audience can hear your question. For our Zoom audience, you can submit your questions by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Following the lecture, please join me and our guests downstairs in the clay room for light refreshments and to continue the conversation. The New York Studio School is grateful to the following funders for their support of the 2023-24 Evening Lecture Series. The National Endowment for the Arts, the New York State Council on the Arts, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, the Robert Lehman Foundation, the Samuel H. Kress Foundation, and many generous individual contributors. Now I'm delighted to introduce our guest this evening. Jonathan Linden Chase is an interdisciplinary artist who works in painting, video, sound, and sculpture to depict queer, black love, and community. Rendered through layers of bright, visceral paint, makeup, and glitter, Chase's figures are suspended in various forms of articulation amidst the backdrop of urban and domestic spaces. These dynamic compositions blend emotional and physical, internal and external states of being to challenge and subvert canonical misrepresentations and exclusion of the black body. Chase's recently featured solo and two-person institutional exhibitions include His Beard is Soft, My Hands Are Empty, at Artist Space here in New York last year, Big Wash at the Fabric Workshop Museum in Philadelphia, Jonathan Linden Chase at the Pond Society in Shanghai, and Semblance, the Public Private Shared Self at the LSU Museum of Art in New Orleans. Recent group shows include those at the Whitney Museum of Art, the Baltimore Museum of Art, the Rudolf Tegner Museum in Denmark, the Institute of Contemporary Art in Miami, LACMA, the Columbus Museum of Art in Ohio, RISD Museum of Art in Providence, the Brooklyn Museum of Art, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Rubell Museum in Miami and DC, and the California African American Museum in Los Angeles. Their work is included in notable numerous private and public collections, such as the Whitney, the Brooklyn Museum, the Walker Art Center, ICA Miami, the High Art Museum, LACMA, the Bronx Museum, the Rubell Museum, the Buxton Contemporary Art Museum, the Wedge Collection, the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art, the Leslie Lohman Museum, the Fairfield University Museum, and Woodmere Museum of Art. Chase was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where they currently live and work, and they're represented by Company Gallery here in New York. Now please join me in offering a very warm welcome to Jonathan. Hey, wow. Um, I want to say uh, thank you for um, everyone that came up to support today, and thank you for the New York School um, for um, inviting me to come and spend this beautiful day to talk to y'all about um, some things that are really important to me. Um, so the topic of my talk today is going to be on body-space relationships. So I thought a great title would be Homebody, Private Liminal Public Spaces. So we're going to kind of take a uh, uh, a go through of parts of the body um, and the inside of it, the external parts of it, and through the five senses. And then we're going to talk about uh, different um, works that I thought were a really great fit for this conversation along with some projects. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'll talk a little bit about like my process, how I kind of get the ball rolling and make order of things. So you'll see this uh, kind of rough sketch here 
Uh, thinking of like physical um, spaces and more kind of abstract spaces and spiritual spaces. And this kind of figure heart uh, drawing in the middle being this sort of graph or grid to kind of get me to think about the things I wanted to talk about for this lecture. Uh, I also wanted to start off by acknowledging some of our queer black ancestors, uh, Exus Hemphill and Joseph Beam, uh, who are two of my, my influences and um, like just have done so much for the culture. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start off, as I mentioned, with talking about uh, the five senses and then a bit later about the sixth sense. Uh, I really like poetry a lot, and it informs lots of um, my work um, across all of the medium. And for each uh, part of the senses, I've kind of paired it with a poem. Um, these poems are coming from a solo show I did called Quiet Storm back in 2018. <clears throat> his thighs clap, clap, clap. He claps his hands, he claps his ass, but only that nigga from Germantown know how to make that ass talk, though. He only claps for one dude, fine dark-skinned dude, that has the dude cheering, smiling so loud each morning. He is mine, I am his beige boy. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, clap, clap depicts a gathering of lovers tussling about in friendly and sexual playness. The sound here is inside of a domestic space. The lamp in the upper right-hand corner comes from the thoughts of a uh, sound control light system. Like, you're probably all familiar with them, like the, the clappers. <laughs> um, and that uh, turn on and off by themselves. And this repeated sound uh, mi mimics a flash uh, being slapped by hands or bodies kind of thrusting back and forth to each other. Depending next to it, um, I thought it was really fitting. I'm just kind of waiting for everyone to come that there was jazz music playing because I really love jazz. And uh, jazz in relationship to sound is something that I really um, love a lot, uh, especially um, artists like Sun Ra and Coltrane. Uh, the bodies here are blowing these instruments powered by their mouths and shaped sort of like organically, like it was sort of a part of their body, a part of the limbs. Uh, they're sort of like tunnels and they're also anuses. Uh, the sound is part intense but also like sensual in a way and reminds me of the sort of sounds that you'll find in a moment of intimacy. So I read like a lot and this is a quote that I thought fit really well um, for what we're going to be talking about today. And this is by a really great book, I recommend you read it, called The Black Interior, Essays by Elizabeth Alexander. Using the voices of physical act, one that first announces the existence of the body of residents and then triumphs this arrival in public space. Sweet Gospel Men, I made this in 2019, uh, I think actually for the Pond Society, um, that show. And this one is about uh, religion as art as a home, spirituality, the magic of healing, um, an incantation, or um, is it sort of more like a prayer? I was raised Baptist and I have lots of personal relationships to the church. I was trained how to play the drums and I used to play uh, the tambourine when I was an usher. The robes um, are inspired by the choir robes that my church choir used to wear. And songs are a way to express joy, praise, sorrow, empowerment, and all of those things are very abundant. Clapping, stomping, shaking, and a trance-like rhythm. The dark space around the body is just sort of my mind's interior focused on the sound. Often people, you know, kind of like close their eyes and kind of like really focus in and like let their ears do the music as like the sound takes them um, somewhere. My grandma was a cowgirl who lived on a farm in Georgia. This is one of the paintings from a show titled Windrider that I'll talk about the Windrider show a little bit later. 
my grandma and my elders used to say phrases like hooping and hollering and like in pop culture, just to sort of connect it like uh, to and from like my personal experience, you'll hear like holla and like the vocabulary like we're rappers named Fabulous or the famous like Gwen Stefani song. Uh, there is something very special about hearing someone on the phone. Uh, the painting is about the intimacy between two people chatting. Uh, this is much as about talking as it is about listening. And the people who are uh, talking on the phone are waiting for a party. So they're leaving a private living space, going into a more public space for a celebration. So we're gonna go into sight. <clears throat> smiling looks good on you. I love the sound of your joy. Baby boy smiling full of joy. Clouds came around. I am waiting for your smile to rain down. Down around, I'll be around for frowns. Never let you down. Drown unless we pound bound hips. Sloosh. Uh, this work is titled Blown Out. It's also a part of the Wind Rider series. This dark, kind of smoky, but illuminated person has just blown on a candle. The world space that's their body is part ghost and also part physical. The light source making a more magical or in a logical sense. Is the subject aware of being seen? What are they looking at? The idea of blown out is also about a person passing away um, or someone moving into another body or lack thereof of space. This one is a bit liminal meaning going through transition of change, a state that may be hard to notice or hard to like pinpoint. It happens often like slow sometimes, but often like really fast, being uncertain about where you are and where you're going. Smell. The night smells when he is away. Paul slaps until the dawn smells like him. I touch my hips to smell the ghost of his hands. How do you keep his smell with you? You forget how he looks. The way he feels forces his smell to haunt your lips. This one on the left is um, like a site that you'll see very often, I imagine, uh, in New York. Um, this one is in Philly. <clears throat> often I'll visit people selling scented oils, um, along with like soaps and incense in public places, like shopping strips or corners of busy sidewalks that have folding tables and some kind of like really nice or fancy cloth over top of it and I'll have after goods to show people who might be passing by to buy them. These uh, interactions are, of course, in like this like public space that's always like ever moving and changing. The bricks blend with the seller's body, sort of the, the person like closer to the, to the left because he is rough and he has hard energy. Uh, there's also like a music symbol for the car is kind of blasting music. Uh, there's snow and cold faces that are framed with hoods. The double doors to the right uh, shows like the contrast between the ordered space inside that has this little bit of like a grid kind of drawing inside of it versus the outside that's more unorganized. The oils come in all kinds of like scents like Baby Powder Queen, Black Power, Frankenessence, um, all kinds of uh, different ones that you can collect. The painting on the right, during my early teens, um, up until like my 20s, I spent a lot of time hanging out at the mall and exploring my sense of self-expression through books, clothing, movies, dating boys. Um, and I have uh, lots of memories um, admiring like perfume and colognes. And uh, I definitely was a, a mog off at the time. Um, and the people in this painting to the right shows those like mall kiosk stands and then there's customers thinking about, you know, casually what selection for the smells that they're um, gonna have. 
the relationship to smell for me is about beauty rituals and the desire to attract someone and uh, care for your body. <clears throat> the zones of the middle part of the painting are part public but also private. Uh, zones shifting between staircases traveling to and from a bedroom nightstand. Some parts such as the bottom portion are a little harder to like read or less identifiable. Uh, because this painting is a part of a larger group about the decay of the mall as a space and the decay of like a particular third space. Like a third space being like you have home work and then like uh, cafes or social uh, gathering spaces. Um, so we're going to move on to taste. Uh, this poem is um, about um, a mouth. A ball, an angry clap disembodied. What can a mouth be? A shrunken trombone, a cave of flesh. Trombones with eons of arms for wings. A sock, a glove, ashtray for shouts. A loaded in 16, basin for sins. A confessional for hopes. Flip-flop, city blue, eyes flashing, stomp, stomp. Asshole rubber band, teeth, gates to a graveyard. Rusted white, urinal yellow. Battleship soaked on walls. Busted naval officers, meat locked salt. Vegetable soup. Um, my grandma had like this really great recipe for vegetable soup. My mother knows it, and I'm hoping to learn it one day also. Um, this like generational passing along of like knowledge and ritual. Uh, love is reflected in the stewing pot, and it's also a magical cauldron at the same time. So if you notice like the shape kind of mirroring the tongue with the heart pointing kind of downward. This work um, is made on a uh, kitchen cloth. And the vegetables blend the figure, fluctuating between how taste can invoke a list of like emotional and mental sensations. Opposite, we see a painting of a basketball game taking place. It is a warm painting and has sweat spewing all over the place and uh, bodies are moving quickly, tactically, passing and dribbling the ball around. Uh, the bodies are bumping and sliding, brushing up past each other, and off the sweat is kind of like this, kind of like getting lost between like all of like this body's physical like interaction. Uh, salty or sweet have been ways that sweat has been described to taste, uh, and you know like you're like you're drenched, your eyes are stinging, and you're repeatedly just kind of like trying to remove it from like your hair and uh, like your lips. Touch. Uh, these are some of like my, my, my sculptural objects. Um, I do lots of like things that are soft, but I thought for this one it would be nice to kind of show these because I don't show them that often. <clears throat> a lot of my work starts off with drawing or from a photo source. Uh, many of the sculptures made of concrete are a reference from paintings I've made. I like to travel to the city a lot, and then like if I'll find something that I, I like or I feel like it just like kind of caused me to it, I'll just go and like nab it and like whisk it back to the studio. So um, the pound cake one, it was like rubble near like a poppy store. They cured uh, New York. He called them bodegas, and uh, I just kind of took it, and then I wanted to make an object from one of the the edible things that was inside. So at this opposite of something that's edible, that's usually soft, to translate it from something hard. Uh, the hard meat, it's a play on words for direct dick. The pound cake um, is also like something that was in the same vicinity as like a market that was nearby from just like off like this concrete from like construction. Um, these are also really about like like touch, but me trying to figure out how I can get a painting to um, like a sculpture to feel like a painting more so. Uh, 
lips, buttholes, and mouths are for talking about pleasure points on the body and that, you know, queer black uh, pleasure is real and legitimate. The centers of the stories are not of oppression, but about access and possibility and freedom for um, the individual, the community, and the culture. Uh, I'm really interested in making tender images and also raw images that aren't easily digestible at times, and they're not meant to like cater to a person's uh, discomfort. Um, there's a large canon of white heteronormative traditionally acceptable bodies that largely make up queer erotica and sexual uh, subject matter, and I'm just like not for uh, the respectability politics. Um, I'm searching for something more honest and real. So you have these two paintings depicting people uh, just embracing and doing like these sort of really intimate um, things, and I think that's super important to see in the visual canon. Artists like Marlon Riggs, Joseph Beam, have shown us through their work the spiritual and political and poetic power of the mouth as a zone of power, the anus as a zone um, in relationship to the mysteriousness of the black queer interiority, like interiority of like the physical body, but so much like more like the mental, the psychic um, spaces. Mouths can be a healer, a pistol, a truth revealer, Anus is a space for reflection, absorber of intense emotions, uh, nucleus of pride, a sea of teleportation. Um, and you'll notice like these sort of like more abstract bodies to the painting on the left. And they remind me of like the infinity eight symbol, which um, is like part like wisdom and means transformation and renewal. Um, and just like the boundless possibilities that can happen. I'm interested in expanding the narrative of bottoming from fear and anxiety and about um, embracing and comfort and relaxation. Um, I'm concerned about the violence of European beauty standards when it comes to how like one might perceive themselves, and it is like really um, damaging to like the physical and the psychic landscapes. And there's so many ways, and just like the the history of art and like image making that a body can look. And there's like not just like one way, right? <clears throat> uh, I like charcoal because it's kind of like a painterly material, but it's also really chaotic and. I have to think about using it in this way that's balancing between the two. Um, and then this idea of uh, a touch or a stain or a scuff resonates with me about like how our bodies like hold different things. Um, then the transparent later layers are just very much about like touch and movement and questioning where like one body begins, one person begins, and where it ends. Uh, there's a really great book uh, called The Body Keeps the Score, um, just in kind of thinking about how our bodies hold things. Um, that would be really good if you're interested to maybe like check that out. Dirty number eight. <clears throat> so I tried to think about how many paintings of black people do I see of them actually like peeing, right? And uh, this uh, painting is about a physical relationship to the touch of one's uh, penis. Um, it could be interpreted erotically, but it's more about the opposite. It's about just the everyday mundane activity, a gentle touch, a moment to hold and relieve yourself, something that everybody does and something that's like just super human. Um, I'm interested in with by this work uh, how the body, yeah, it's like really gross at times, but there's something quite beautiful in that like realization and like reminding us of that, like the fluctuation of being clean and dirty. These three sculptures are soft in nature, but also have some hard elements to them, 
like the jewelry that's um, adorning their bodies. <clears throat> so they're like these different personalities. One is more relaxed, the other is waiting for um, someone or something to happen. And they're all placed in this um, private bedroom situation. The figure, um, one of the figures is more like a daydreamer, contemplating like the day and then like what's gonna happen at nighttime. These, you know, relationships between this like passage of day and night as well. And these are about a certain sense of touch that are not about so much the lens, but again, referencing um, pleasure and PowerPoints that are both for desire and also the potential for great world and political change as well, and self-liberation and freedom. The watercolor drawing on the right um, is very much about the interiority um, of this body, but it kind of like uh, questions like the boundaries of the body and like the complexities that are happening within. I thought it would make sense to talk about since it's like space, like like doors. Um, like entrances, exits, thresholds. <clears throat> I have this other quote that I thought was like really great from a book I love again. Um, I should start like a book club or something. Um, <laughs> uh, how concrete everything becomes in a world of the spirit when an object, a mere door, can give images of hesitation, temptation, desire, security, welcome and respect. If one were to give an account of all of the doors one has closed and opened, all the doors would like to reopen, one would have to tell the story of one's entire life. The person wearing a dress uh, in the painting that you see uh, to the left um, wants to protect themselves with the diamonds that they've adorned all over their their body. <clears throat> They're walking in a poetic space, possibly alone in a hallway, making their way to a shadowy threshold. This person is returning back, back to a dark space, a shadow space that is their own. Their shadow welcomes them to take refuge within, within it. Um, the landscape of your mind is a bit turbulent, there are many different uh, like waves and kind of like this like movement happening in the hair part um, of like their head in the zone of the painting. And you can kind of see like these dark kind of parts of like this arm and like kind of shadow that's um, the sort of transformation uh, kind of taking place as they're proceeding off to the left of um, off the picture plane. The reflections inside of the living room for the painting on the right, um, they're basically kind of like blended with this person. So there's the reflections of the person, then some of the information of like the stoop, and then there's the wire framework of the painting. So this one being titled In or Out is really sort of like a question of like, you know, where is this person going? Like the uncertainty. Um, of the moment, um, which isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing, it, it, it just is. I thought about if I wanted to include this painting, and I'm glad I did, <clears throat> that I decided to, to put it in because I wanted to show uh, how collage influences my work in some ways. And in this case, I decided to take all of these individual canvases um, to make like one big piece um, together. Together um, to invoke the memories that I had while just traveling in one of my neighborhoods in Philadelphia. Um, everything has a history to it through physical touch and psychic uh, 
like charging, like how like when you are constructing your collage or assemblage, you're taking like these sort of already found elements and, and, and things that have like their own inherent energy to them to make a new of reality or world. Um, and very much like sort of thinking about how our bodies hold things, uh, spaces and, and objects do as well. And this uh, painting is more like sculptural leaning in that kind of in that kind of way. The ideas of the power of gazing from one figure to another, uh, the one figure kind of blending into the exterior public space, not wanting to stand out too much. Um, they're kind of like hidden a little bit. One person leaving a restaurant, a uh, person greeting with a loud, like a lyrical yo. Uh, you know, a person can hear that across the street. The hardness of the bricks, the figures blending, and to try to map themselves to how they want to perform it in this outside space. Um, if they want to navigate in a way that's like detectable or like these questions of safety. And then people just kind of like at rest and enjoying themselves. Um, it's super important for me to show um, like people at rest and not always necessarily uh, doing a thing. Um, there's taste, there's someone eating food, there's like soft things with this punching bag, this like moment of leisure. Yeah, I really like this painting and I thought it was a great um, kind of example of these senses kind of showing up in like one work together. Uh, windows. <clears throat> So this is a work of paper. It's kind of like a time lapse for a person walking outside and it's like dark and the windows are glowing, but then their bodies are also illuminated from the inside out. Um, and this one's about feeling the sense of accepting a situation that's beyond your control and like this space, but having um, the understanding that uh, things might be like dark or dim, but you can still kind of like find your own light and ignite from within yourself. Kind of similar in different ways to the diamonds all over my body, um, the protection idea from personal experience and experiences of my friends and family on their journey through self-expression. I'm this person wearing a dress outside. The painting with the uh, window that's close uh, close up, I made it for a big wash uh, a few years ago. And when that show was on, uh, the pandemic, um, I think it had just uh, started or like we were like well into it. And I was thinking a lot about how we basically had to like see ourselves through some kind of like lens or filter or barrier. And this is like kind of a, mixture or mashup of sad emotions, but also kind of maybe happy ones. I use weather phenomena to describe uh, a large array of emotions, like often in my work. So the yellow and the kind of blue of like the raindrops are kind of teetering back and forth between joy and sorrow. <clears throat> the painting on the right is from my residency on Fire Island and just like walking around, it was like really common and serene. And I was really just kind of taken back by all of the windows and all of the activities that were happening within the outside space being very cold and rainy, but the interiors being really warm and filled with people, just like cozying up with each other. And I wanted to make a painting just, just had like lots of different um, windows within them. There's like, they're all, we're all together on this really, beautiful island that feels like another world, while simultaneously there's like many worlds happening at the same time. These are these uh, paintings that I made of these horses that are kind of fleeing. Um, there's this tornado, this storm, and um, it has a great deal to do about grief. Um, it's a part of the Wind Rider um, series that we're 
approaching it just a little bit. But um, I wanted to talk about it with the windows, um, just different ways that we can think about grief, especially like of the absence of the body. So it's kind of like a more of an idea. Uh, bathrooms. This is one of my favorite paintings. I think it also was in Shanghai as well. <clears throat> so you'll see this figure who's um, by themselves just sitting in a tub. And you'll notice that the head is kind of rendered a bit differently. Um, it has a lot to do with disassociation and groundedness. Uh, where is their ground and when is it coming? Uh, groundedness and being ungrounded. So the person is sort of trying to tend to like their muscle aches and these kind of array of symptoms that comes with disassociation or not feeling comfortable in your body. So the water's kind of blanketing them and kind of reinforcing like this idea of detachment. This is another poem I wrote that I thought fit really well with this painting. <clears throat> Cleanliness is next to godliness, baptize my guts. Pumping hold fill suds, washing out a cemetery isn't easy. But you can also die in a home. Soil sheets, organless body. This one is titled Cleaning My Foreskin. I've paired it with this other poem. He promised a bigger towel, don't chew gum, we run around my pussy, it's slippery remembering walking on a dream hill, shake my sleeping if I whimper. This is one of my favorite works and it's this, just this idea, um, idea, this like image of someone doing a self care ritual. The numbers sort of symbolize their thought space when they're preparing to enter the shower. And it symbolizes um, some anxiety that this person is uh, mm -hmm. dealing with. Um, like the sort of countdown to um, something. And the bathroom is sort of blending in and becoming um, one or an extension of your body. This is sort of a time-based one um, inspired by um, clocks. Um, talking about, again, another self-care ritual and preparing um, for sex and thinking of the body you know, in a more physical um, sense, uh, as like a, like a home, like a dwelling. And the internal plumbing that we have inside of ourselves, um, the bathroom mirrors the physical and emotional spaces that the subjects are dealing with and their relationships to their body um, while they're um, in like these sort of like ritual stages of uh, about to have an intimate uh, moment um, outside somewhere preparing to exit this space and go out into another. So I made that triptych first and then this one came a little bit later. And um, this one is more kind of like giving focus on like the body um, holding uh, water and the uh, internal um, pipes. Uh, they're like kind of intestines and tunnels for me within the body like a house, and the many components and mechanisms that keep it running. And this um, space that the figure is in is sort of um, like a, an idea of like the interior um, of uh, the architecture of uh, a home. This person is drying off uh, basically like the day, um, having like this private mental space moment the multiple faces um, in the body are parts of the body's interior, um, and also the wetness of the skin. And this is uh, just depicting a private moment that we wouldn't see um, outside when we're like amongst people in a social setting. I thought it was appropriate to, I paint lots of cars. Um, it was appropriate to add some cars to this as another kind of like maybe more mobile moving space. <clears throat> this poem I made was in 20, 
17, it's titled Maps. Um, all sensuous on the fields, I draw murky bones in his pomp list. Way dope, the dawn will die, so scary behind the flowers. We grasp uh, dinked uh, illusions beyond the gods' intents. The thought is dying, evil and happy beneath the gardens and hills. His hills, we destroy white symbols in the rain, atone, the lust is hard. Weary, unsafe, never meeting, an unreliable map. I love him, we're searching for each other, way dope, the night blankets us. The painting on the left is, at the time earlier in my career, one of the biggest paintings um, I made. It was for the Rebels residency that I did, which is a really fun experience. Um, and this is also an example of like a painting that I worked from a photograph that I took just all over Philly. Like there's people whizzing down the street on like motorcycles and like these like quad bikes and stuff. So the figures look a bit more static, um, almost like it's like the slow motion of how fast they're going, and then the space around them is blurred. And the kind of nook where you see like a city um, skyline is again like this question of are they coming or going? Um, maybe it's not necessarily so important, um, but I just find it really. Um, romantic and beautiful like and, and thrilling just to be going at a high speed and racing down somewhere with uh, someone you love and this idea of um, sticking by um, sticking by them through like a very turbulent time. The painting next to it um, uh, I feel like everybody definitely can relate to. Um, this person is leaving the car, uh, about to go into their home, and it's about this kind of showing this ritual of, of love, waiting into the person actually enters the door to make sure that they are safe um, in this like outside space. So the person on the left is like, you know, their body's made into this car, like this thing that's gotten them from point A to B, and they're sharing like this non, uh, communicative uh, signal between each other. And then on the, on the other end is, hey, send me a text, send me a call when you've made it to your destination. This one is about um, Thinking just as this cars is like multiple spaces, and then this one being about like mental work or, or fixing or tending to. When I make images of cars, <clears throat> um, I often think about the large number of murders and the trauma and horror that surrounds vehicles. Uh, one of my favorite uh, artists, Henry Taylor, I, I always think about his painting. Uh, it's called, titled, The Time Taint Changing Fast Enough. And I had been making kind of like work about cars for a while, but then like I saw that painting and it just made me even want to make like more images of people in cars um, in different um, situations because I feel like that similar space, um, especially now we're seeing like this reassurgence of like black cinema and horror that, um, it's like a, it's just a site of, uh, of terror. Um, this car space is a lot about mental health. I talk a lot about uh, my experience living with bipolar disorder and the sensation that you get from having euphoria, mania, a heightened sense of emotions. And there's lots of like very fabulous things about that until it's not fabulous. <laughs> Um, and um, the phrase you always hear, uh, crash, you know, like if you drink a bunch of caffeine, you're like, oh, you know, you'll feel it later when you, you know, come down from it, you have to crash. Um, everyone's personal experience with this is, of course, um, very unique to themselves, but for the time I was at, you know, like 
headspace and stuff when I painted it. Um, I was just working through some stuff with this idea of like what it might feel like um, coming down um, from like a higher, like a, a manic state. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the laundry mat. And um, this is like, uh, just like a, a picture of what the gallery space looked like. And this being more about a liminal space, a space that you kind of go through and like you don't stay in that long and it's like very transitional. So the paintings that are on the walls and kind of surrounding this middle part of the grid the grid part is more like the laundry mat. Like you're going into the space with strangers and you get a real sense of the, the, uh, the, the cosmopolitan canopy, um, which is another great book, of, of the people in like a city or space. And it's this really wonderful kind of mix of your attending to like these very personal delicate needs of washing your clothes, you're collectively sharing this uh, experience, like almost like going to a movie with people and then you leave. Um, so uh, this grid for me also symbolizes these sort of like uh, binary systems that when we're in like certain public spaces um, that are kind of just seeking to tell us how we ought to be. Um, so the grids are kind of more of like a danger sort of element. This was just one of the paintings that I made that um, uh, wasn't present during the show, but um, again, with this idea of the checkerboard and like this like just one, two kind of color scheme and there's like not much room to like move in it. There, there aren't any options. The death of the mall. Uh, there's like, a lot of um, articles and essays and people who are talking about, I guess in terms of like sociology and economical things about malls just kind of perishing across the country. And I did a body of work that was centered around uh, just that thought, but specifically around um, this underground mall that used to be in Philadelphia called The Gallery. Uh, <laughs> and um, it was around like since the 80s and it was like a really, um, pivotal point for um, just like the community of Philadelphia, all kinds of people were there. Um, and this is where I re-mentioned The Cosmopolitan Canopy, um, a book that talks about Center City and um, this work um, that I did in relationship to that really talks about the decay and the gentrification of these third and public spaces and how they affect um, all kinds of communities, especially communities um, of color and um, people who were um, just trying to make it. Like, uh, I didn't come from, from money, so we used to just, you know, there was a space where people could just go and they hang out, be social, things of that nature. So um, it closed for like two years and then it reopened, but it's under this whole other nasty gentrification like aesthetic, like everything from just the sheer number of like seats being like erased, all of the stores are high in price. Um, it's really quite unfortunate because I just wonder where a lot of the people I knew and like this all of the people, like where did they migrate to? So there's like lots of like these like, kind of liminal, like like almost ghost kind of castle-like spaces because there's no people in them. Um, I'm just gonna take a second. Am I? Come on. Hmm? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, I just wanna check out, I'm just like vibing off. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. Um, so like with the cars, um, you know, I thought it was really important because it's a type of space that's like, you know, moving. I did a bunch of these double-sided paintings 
about the Broad Streets uh, subway, SEPTA in Philly. So we have a blue line that goes like above surface, then there's the orange line, the Broad Street um, subway system. Uh, it's also what it's called, but we call it the orange line. And I thought these were like these really cool spaces because again, like kind of like the mall, you'll see all kinds of different people there and they're like these like huge sensory overloads. Um, and then uh, thinking about like what a body of work just in a studio practice, like what that looks like. And then like the obsession that kind of comes with it. Um, so then um, since I made these, I just kind of, again, continued to keep making uh, train and subway uh, paintings. This person is walking through um, the train cars and is carrying their duffel bag that's filled with scented oils to earn some money. They're, you know, they're hustling. Um, because the train is in motion, um, there's like all like these, you know, motion blurs. The numbers on the opposite side, so the, this is the front side of the painting, where it's like mostly the orange, and then the one that has this fabric is the back side of the painting. Um, again, like the numbers are kind of coming in as this idea of anxiety. Um, like numbers just hold like so many different meanings. And like if you just kind of ambiguously see a number, um, it's really just kind of hard to read. And for me, it just always makes me like, just like really anxious. <clears throat> um, questions about safety and navigation are entangled with uh, attraction and, and hustling. Um, trains in my work, uh, like they symbolize a transition in life. And since they're underground, there's sort of like a mysterious or a hidden meaning behind emotions or a journey that you're taking. Okay, so like nobody was like hurt during this, but one time it caught on fire and it was really crazy. <laughs> um, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, <laughs> but um, it, it like there was like some kind of malfunction or something and I remember it was it was like scary, yeah, but also fascinating how everyone is kind of like the smoke is filling in, but does it see like that group of people? It could have turned like so bad. And everyone is kind of like like was really supportive of each other and like orderly kind of like left uh the train cart. And it just kind of always stuck with me. Um so the opposite side for this one, uh I do lots of like repetition or like kind of like these obsessive, just like kind of going over and over again marks. Um, this side is more about like the 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 top, um, like above street level. And there's like a bunch of churches and stuff. And then there's like these spray painted crosses and it's like, uh, okay, 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 okay. But um, I am thinking of the text as a space for like, personality and thinking of it like haptic, haptically, like the sounds it, um, it makes. And yeah, I'll just go through the list of the stops because I just like to say them. Uh, Alamy, Logan, Wyoming, Hunting Park, Erie, Allegheny, North Philadelphia, Susquehanna Dolphins, Cecil B. Moore, Gerard, Fairmount, Chinatown, Aphon Market, that's where you would get off to go to the gallery. That's not there anymore. Uh, Spring Garden, Race Vine, City Hall, Walnut Locust, 15th and 16th, Lombard and South, Tasker Morris, Snyder, and Oregon. Are all of the stops just for this uh, orange line? These subway spaces make me think of collage or assemblage in a way that many elements are coming together quickly and changing and um, ever changing to create different realities. On Rise, there are all of the six cents, the six senses present. Some people are playing music, carrying groceries, having a quick snack. People are touching each other, knees are leaning, shoulders are rocking back and forth. Um, you smell like hairspray, piss pretzels, uh, you know, like you can engage in active looking or just casually gazing. 
Sometimes you'll even see people, you know, thinking of like the sixth sense, um, meditating or praying. It's just like all kinds of like this like mix of these beautiful um, things happening that are like routine and like you're kind of a part of someone's life and they don't even know it and uh, vice versa. This figure is covered in cum and has some of the many passengers travel uh, on a train to the private space of their bedroom to make their own train. The numbers are drawn on the stretcher bars as if they're the tracks like that the train like rides on. And I kind of thought it was interesting to kind of like use that also kind of like uh, where like the phone numbers are, are coming or traveling on through to communicate the plans uh, for the quote unquote ride. Um, so going back to the domestic interior of the house, <clears throat> kitchens are domestic spaces with many functions, memories, communities. They are often associated with femme gender expectations. However, when thinking of these barriers and historical ideas surrounding race, gender, and sexuality, it gets very complex in both joyful and despairing ways as well as these ideas of pleasure and pain and how they affect the inside and outside of the body. Warm cake, depending on the left, uh, transforms an oven into a bedroom. Uh, the grid about, um, about this one is like less oppressive, but more about the kitchen as a space of like systems and everything having a place for the tools. There's a recipe you have to follow. So that's more of like the ordered space. The oven is also morphing into a body for uh, metaphors about love making and desire. Kitchens are a space of much trust, experimentation, just like relationships. The next painting um, is about uh, soft heartedness, worries um, going away down the drain. I wanted to show these figures almost like a structure showing the home these people have built together. The arch, um, it's round because I want it compositionally for it to uh, not have like too many like hard angles and just to sort of mimic the roundness of like the table, the chandelier, the plates, and the bodies. This installation is a part of a group show that uh, recently came down to Milan um, for a group show called Mother Boy, uh, which um, I'm like paraphrasing sort of, but um, a boy or a man who has a strong attachment to their mother um, and who may or may not be interested in upholding traditional gender rules that define masculinity. Their phrase encapsulates many complex ideas around gender identity. I decided I wanted to talk about the kitchen, which is uh, inspired by my childhood one. Um, so that's why it's yellow. The yellow was selected um, out of many different shades and the color invokes feelings of nostalgia and um, also uh, thinking of like acid or sickness. Um, yellow can be an indicator for being um, ill. <clears throat> uh, this is a site for memories involving creation as a young artist and just the many nights I spent like just drawing and writing and um, making all, all types of things. And it talks to the, the ability of like what can be birthed out of, of a home. Um, like what, is, what does a home life or domestic space look like and like what does it kind of like churn, uh, churn out? It's just uh, another angle of it. Okay, uh, The Wind Rider um, was a show that was heavily based uh, and influenced around grieving and my late grandmother, who was from Georgia and she was a cowgirl. She lived on a farm and she was a very, very uh, religious Baptist woman. Um, I loved her very much. Um, and so the show was like kind of like part personally for me in a personal space, um, a way to deal with um, her passing and then also 
uh, extending out from my space into like the the cultural space. Um, these ideas about uh, cowboys and masculinity, image making, as well as in some ways what it was like to um, live as a person who was um, Baptist Christian for like a very long time as a queer black person. Um, when writer within the title, um, I made these kind of sculptural, uh, sculptural paintings they're out of spray foam, like you use for like um, installation and stuff like that. Um, and the wind uh, as the element for this particular project is the space that acts as the teleporter. So it sort of um, gets into more of a fantastic, or, uh, fantastic uh, space. Matter of fact, I'll go back for a second. Yeah, so um, I know this is the best shot just to show for, for the talk here, but um, you'll notice there's like a painting that's suspended. So like the tornado was like literally kind of sprawled all of like these memory fab, uh, fragments around. Um, this sculpture is titled Babel. Um, like the like most of my sculptures I mentioned, like I sourced this from outside and I sat around a long time meditating, the deciding what I wanted to do with it, but I knew that it was important. Um, so it has a sound component. Um, regrettably, I couldn't get like enough audio quality I was satisfied with to like put it in, but um, there's like cries and laughing, uh, laughing and moans and chants and the door is like kind of standing in for a body that's uh, grieving and then the buckets are sort of like trying to collect like the spillage um, of the person to sort of like kind of keep themselves together. Um, this is a painting of a helm off that was in a show. So this is also more about like a spiritual space and what it kind of feels like to be um, unsettled within your, your, like your physical space, like your, your emotional space, um, being like unsettled um, or tortured. And I thought it was cool just to kind of pair it from side by side with like these like two images that I'm really like am fascinated by. Um, so a lot of my work is like thematic in a way that's like kind of time capsule or a specific kind of aesthetic. And then many times it's not. So the last one we just talked about was more like more uh, cowboy aesthetic. This one is going into um, beaches, mermaids, and uh, naval um, officers. <clears throat> so the personal space for me was on um, my uh, father served in the military, he was in the Navy. Uh, I didn't know him very long because he passed away like a few months like literally after I was born. But um, this show, Fog, is kind of like the space um, being transformed into like this dock in the gallery and confronting and thinking about my kind of relationship with a part of me that I kind of don't know entirely well. And then similarly to the Cowboys, the historical space of wanting to um, uh, pay homage to um, other uh, artists um, such as Alvid Balthrop, who did a lot of work here, like the, the peers and things of that nature. So this one is part historical, and then it also leans a little bit into fantasy, because I introduce uh, mermaids and sirens, and um, uh, also for history, um, the... Uh, Naval Yard was the birthplace, um, was in Philly. It was founded in 1776. Um, I don't think it's used for that anymore. It's like something else now. These are a lot about protection um, and kind of drawing within to yourself and showing a little bit more love for um, people who find like lots of power and relaxation and necessary um, self-care and solitude. Um, I think we like are really like love like extroverts, right? But I think like you know there should be a little bit more um, love for for introverts um, and what uh, those personalities can bring um, to everyone. So these uh, shell kind of creatures are maybe not so much timid, but they're just like having agency over their body. Okay, a few 
few more. Uh, this was um, his beard is soft, my hands are empty. This one focused on uh, the liminal space of a barbershop, which is like hypercharged with these um, hyper masculine energies, but also um, energies of community and, and love and guidance and mentorship. But like a lot of the things I'm interested in in my work and with this um, liminal space, there's always like these sort of like tensions or butting ends against each other. Um, so I was uh, able to do the whole off floor. I sectioned off one part as a living room, and then the other part was more of like the the um, the barber shop. And then here we see this is like sort of where you come into the artist space, and then there's like this middle part that was the kind of street side. Now we're drawing closer um, to, now we're talking about the sixth sense. I'm talking about um, this idea of like self pursuit of mastery, self love, um, seeing love in the image of yourself. And these compound spaces are windows and mirrors to a shadow world or view um, of the shadow self, a part of our human landscape that is always present and can be suppressed and discovered at any time in life. Uh, how many ways can we see ourselves? If you aren't like a twin or like a doppelganger, how can we see ourselves with our naked eye? And that's not through the lens of someone else. These are about um, birth, life, death, mind, body, soul, past, present, and future. Um, these sort of bodies are, um, with the idea of the sixth sense, are lending themselves to something more spiritual and about um, choices to be made. <clears throat> and I think it was really fitting for me to um, kind of conclude with um, a very early painting I made on in grad school that is this uh, figure who's carrying like these heads with them that are facets of their personality, kind of like tools of being in the field of like a space. And this one is a little bit more ambiguous in nature, so they're leaving um, one space and entering into this outside uh, world. Um, and yeah, it's also kind of in a lot of ways um, getting into a lot of work I'm interested in now when questioning reality and delving into more ideas of um, like dream spaces and um, more spiritual practices. And yeah, I guess I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Um, I invite those in the room to please raise your hand if you have any questions. And those online, please enter your questions into the chat by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Does anyone want to ask the first question? Uh, hi. Um, I have a question. I, a lot of your paintings involve spray paint. What do you find so fascinating about spray paint? You said spray paint? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. Thank you. Okay. I really like spray paint because... Uh, kind of similar to the charcoal, it's a bit chaotic, and you can get lots of just different kind of textures or sensitivity to touch with it. And then I go, I think it's also part like um, Philadelphia just having so much graffiti mm -hmm. around it, and also partly because like I'm just interested in just trying this different paint material. So like there's, I guess in a way like nothing really off like limit. Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of am drawn to the visceral kind of like loose quality that it has. Oh, I have another question. I think in one of the slides you show, it was a sculpture. And I just want to know, is that, yeah, let's see. Was it like this one or? No, it was like three. Oh, the uh, kind of like, it's like soft three. people. Yeah. I just, let's see. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one with the do rag reminds me of like a a stud. That, that is that what it is when it comes to that. Say, I'm sorry. Say no, that again? the one on the with the do rag. Yeah, 
It reminds me of a, what's the word for it? Stud? Of a female who dresses more butch. Oh. oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, um, well, for me, as a, um, as a person who um, identifies as non-binary, so, um, and then when it comes to, like, the audience, um, like, I like to hear stuff like that because, like, you know, like, the work takes on different meanings and things. And for me, um, if someone, you know, is, like, seeing themselves in that way through their work, um, yeah, I, I love that. And a lot of my, my figures, you know, purposely kind of, like, are um, fluctuating between all kinds of, like, states in that way. Um, so um, maybe not my in intended purpose specifically to that, but I love that. <laughs> I was interested in your um, in in the ways that the bodies sort of become their spaces. So the in the toilets and the cars, the bodies are very closely related to the spaces. So it's the machines of these, um, the plumbing and the engines. And then conversely, do you feel as though the there's a sort of humanism in, embedded or passed through to the machine as well, where it becomes a bit softer, and so they both sort of meet in the middle in some way? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, maybe, I think maybe in this way that I feel like items have such a potential for this maybe so much more than what they're intended. And what I mean by that is that, like if you look at like spiritual like artworks or things of that nature, and that they'd serve like maybe like a higher purpose or like we get attached really sentimentally to certain things, maybe more like um, in that way, um, I think if I'm understanding what you're saying. Um, and then there's also just like this you know, more existential thought that, you know, like we're, like we have a, um, you know, like this corporal vessel, you know, it has an end date and um, how different is like the sort of flesh um, compared to something that, you know, um, eventually will like not be here forever. Great, thank you. Yeah, it feels like there's sort of a give and take between this. Yeah, the animate and the inanimate. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Jonathan. Um, I just wanted to ask about the numbers in your pieces because I just yes. saw a lot of, um, like, there was 11, 14, 5. I was wondering, is that related to um, the Bible or your um, Baptist background? or And then how did you choose those specific numbers? Thank you. That's a fabulous question. Thank you for asking it. Um, so I do think about religion a lot um, with the numbers just being raised and... Um, being like going to Sunday school and stuff and then hearing like psalms or verses or chapter. Um, the whole thing just really like just like traumatized me, right? Um, and uh, I try to, um, just to kind of maybe loop back to the spray paint, um, I kind of find it also it's like a, like a, like a writing instrument. So um, I'm interested in like sort of the ambiguity of the numbers um, more so. Um, like it's a lot of personal narratives with me. Um, really um, rooted in anxiety, how numbers have manifested in my life. Um, uh, weight gain, um, I was always like just, like many, like maybe many of us is like really fucking bad at math. And um, it, on the surface it doesn't sound that bad, but um, through just like my self uh, were for a long time just in academia, um, I really had a hard time with that until I, came to understand like I just had like a different way that my brain worked um, and it just gave me like just lots of uh, anxiety. Great. I have an online question which is do you keep art journals or notebooks and sketchbooks? How important are those to your practice? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm always telling my students you have to have to have to keep like 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 she lives her like archiving, right? Like um, I have so many sketchbooks and binders, and I'm always constantly um, like they're like living documents or like spell books, right? Um, 
in order to sort of make sense to balance the more liberated and free ways that I move through the studio. Um, so yeah, I encourage everyone, even if it's maybe not like a sketchbook, keep a journal, keep a dream journal, you know, um, it's really therapeutic and like you'll learn a lot about yourself. And, um, uh, a lot of my, um, ideas in writing, um, involving, um, uh, Afrofuturism, science fiction and horror, um, they take, um, book, uh, book forms and, um, yeah, like, uh, that, that idea to practice, I think is absolutely, uh, necessary for like, no matter like what, like medium you're working in. Thank you so much. I just the merger of like text and image and spirit is just really it's just really moving and this is just reaffirming why I'm I'm always drawn to your work but I wanted to I'm thinking like pain process pleasure and oftentimes in in seeing your shows it's like a sensory overload like multisensory like all the senses tapped at once and I guess I'm just curious about like the act of making for you mm -hmm and the combination of all those senses as you were like releasing and pouring into, which almost feels like a catching of the spirit if we're going back to the church. Thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, I was getting a little emotional. Um, yeah. Um, the first thought that pops into my head is um, the studio space is sacred and I can be like my most vulnerable and honest self there. And I'm just, you know, have so many ideas that I feel like I just can't get out of myself fast enough, which also in a part, just to go back to the, the how books and sketchbooks are so important because sometimes you forget things and they kind of keep them all in order and keep a track of everything. And when I'm like making um, like a show or even if I'm like maybe selecting work to go somewhere, like I'll have like many, many options for something. And the hardest part sometimes too is just like kind of editing it down um, because like each space is like so specific and um, this is really hard to, um, or easy sometimes just to kind of give into like my, um, what do you call it, maximalist kind of uh, um, sensibility. Um, and it's, it's really therapeutic for me. Um, because it's like I just carry like lots of um, like even um, good emotions or not that any emotions are good or bad, but the ones that we associate with being happy or sad. Um, it's just a way for me to um, just kind of like keep myself balanced and mentally healthy. Um, you know, um, this isn't, you know, shade toward anyone, but some artists make work for whatever reason they make it. For me, it's not like, oh, there's a show, there's a deadline. Like, like I'm always like in that space. It's more so about me um, just continuing to try to like learn, love myself, <laughs> heal, and um, yeah, just ground, um, just ground myself. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm conscious of time. Um, so I just want to thank you, Jonathan. We'll continue the conversation downstairs with our reception. Thank you.